What is true power? True power is in bone. True power is what we best own to manifest, to create. Physical power is a product of that true power. Financial power is a product of those true powers. Hello, it's Dr. Jacinta Mpali and Kanamori, your transformational coach and spiritual counselor. Today, I'll be sharing 10 inborn powers that we ought to embrace, recognize, you know, and start respecting them so that they can progress our lives. Now, the first power is the power of decision. Now, respecting your power of decision means that you follow through. If you decide wholeheartedly, if you come to a point of decision that you're not going to eat chocolate, then do not eat chocolate. Disrespecting that power, that decision is when you go ahead and eat chocolate because the ego has convinced you, you know, it's okay, it's okay, just a little bit of chocolate. You have now disrespected that power. So the next time you decide and you, this time you wholeheartedly intend, you know, you, you have made a decision and you want to move from point A to B, your psychic has already, you know, uh, uh, adapted that conflict, picked up that conflict and put it right there in your unconscious mind so that it's going to conflict your decision. So you end up moving back and forth, deciding, not deciding because you have already inserted a virus in your unconscious mind because you did not respect this power. The second power is the power of intention. When we intend to be something or to do something or to move from point A to B, respecting that power that means that we do not allow any negative influences or any conflicting thoughts to disrupt our intention we focus on our intention and allow guidance within us to lead our actions so that we can manifest our intention and bring it into reality so disrespecting our intentions for instance you intend to lose 10 pounds you intend to lose 10 pounds okay but then everything you do is conflicting that intention and maybe even your thinking is also conflicting that intention that power because you you start doubting that you could achieve that you can achieve what you've intended so respecting our intention is to religiously focus on what we've intended to manifest and not allowing external influences or negative thinking or, or, go, or egoistical, you know, stuff to take us away from our intentions. The third power is the power of, uh, give me a minute, please. The power of attention. Now that is a very powerful power that we literally abuse now everything that we give our attention to we create we bring to life we manifest everything that we give our attention to becomes real in our external world so whatever you're giving your attention to is definitely going to create so respecting our power of attention is giving our attention to only those things that we want to progress our lives and most importantly, giving our attention to ourselves. We are so much into the outer world. We are traveling away further from ourselves and literally embracing the external world and short-term gratifications and external stimuli and forgetting to go within and give our attention to the one who is looking behind these beautiful eyes of yours. So sometimes it's so important to give your attention to yourself. You know, who are you? Asking the question, who am I? And giving that attention to yourself so that you can discover who is living the life that you're living. And then the fourth power is the power to think. Oh my God, don't we really abuse that power? We are always disrespecting it. We think about everything we don't want. We think about what we don't, you know, what hasn't worked out. We think about, we allow thinking to rule our lives, you know. We think about the past. We think about the negative past. We allow the ego to present all these situations upon which we think negatively. And we forget that the ego will present these thoughts Although they are 
beautiful knights in riding armors, you know, embroidered in gold, riding on a, on a white big horse. And once you entertain even one single thought, <laughs> the ego is going to drive you like a pony, okay? Negative thinking is definitely going to whew, run you down. So the power of thinking is just respected when we think about the negative. Respecting the power of thinking means that you only think about what's good. And regardless of what's showing up in your external world, just think about what you want. Think about what you're grateful for. Think about what you have. Think about the beautiful things around you. Control your mind. I know I do. I try. It's hard, but it's doable when you're so tired of the negative manifestations of negative thinking and the ego. All right. So the fifth power is the power of fascination. Reverend Ike, one of the reverends of the ages, I think the 90s and 80s once said, when you become so fascinated about what you want, every cell within you becomes so fascinated. And then the divinity, the, uh, the universe within you works together for that fascination to be manifested in your external world. So let us be fascinated on what's good, you know, on what we want, on other people's beauty, on the beauty around us. Let's be fascinated about positive news you know i have a friend who is just so fascinated about what is wrong you know that friend of mine will call you with so much fascination about some bad news and drop the news although they are telling you oh listen jesus have just has just appeared and he's on a roller coaster somewhere <laughs> anyway the power of fascination is respected when we when we fascinate what we really intend when what we are fascinated about we intend it because sometimes you're so fascinated about what is not working out and that's not what you intend to manifest so respecting the power of fascination is focusing on what you want and what you have and then the sixth power is the power of intuition we disrespect that power because we never we don't respect ourselves we don't know what power we have we don't even know that we have that power you know that inner voice that inner voice of guidance can literally tell you in your thoughts hey don't go there you intuit that you're just about to fall into trouble you're just about to relate to a bad person you know that somebody who is going to hurt you there is no bad person but you're just about to relate to somebody with conflicting conditioning to yours and you just say ah, no you st because we doubt ourselves we because we think we don't have this power but to respect the power of attention is to spend time with yourself every day Day and tune in and tune into this power and know that it exists within you because it's the guidance the god-given universal guidance within you that helps you see beyond appearances you know it's your third eye the eye that sees before the two physical eyes are able to see what you see and then we have the power of perseverance power number seven. Oh my god we have that power you know let me give you an example sometimes you go to bed when you're so exhausted and you're like ah, i ain't waking up tomorrow no 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 but in the morning because of that power that you ignore you wake right back up because you're persevering through life you don't give up you persevere on your thinking on positive thinking you persevere on your intention so this power aids are the powers now this Respecting this power is when you persevere in negative thinking or negative action or negative feeling. Negative thinking, negative actions or negative feelings. Things that are driving you farther away from what you intend to have. Things that are promoting negativity. Things that are promoting, you know, emotional turmoil. That is disrespect your power of perseverance because how many times do we persevere in relating to people who bring us down you know like you know that group or that person is abusing you in some way or is is triggering negative emotion but you wake up and you persevere and drag yourself and be in their company so that is disrespecting the power of perseverance now number eight is the power of patience Woo! that is power i tell you you know sometimes we disrespect it because you're patient but then you're almost pulling out all your hairs you're like it's not happening it's not you're biting your teeth 
that's just respecting the power of patience the power of patience is just sitting down respecting it means that you stay still and you tap into some other power of faith you know i haven't included this power, but it's just come up to me uh the power of faith you just know like you know that i'm gonna sit there and what i'm waiting for has already manifested i just have to recognize it in my physical reality so that power of patience is supported by the power of faith so it's about knowing who you truly are because when you know that your divine instrument created in the same image of god it's written everywhere it's evidenced by the beating of your heart it's evidence that when you go to sleep you don't even have to breathe you don't control your breathing breathing is done through you is breathing is done to you for you then you know that there is power within you that enables all those things to happen so that should give you a little bit of faith to know that you can be patient and wait with joy that what you want is going to show up now the ninth power is the power of love now we respect that power when we love unconditionally and i know that could be difficult especially when you are speaking from the basis of the ego because the ego is what presents duality the ego presents conflict the ego presents conditioning so if you're operating from that basis from that foundation of conditioning then love is going to be conditional because you're comparing a to b your condition is showing you no that's not good that's not bad so you're consistently going back and forth with what is right what is wrong and what is you know what you should love or shouldn't love respecting the power of love is loving everything saying yes to everything regardless of whether it's literally triggering negative emotions within you say yes to it and then move away say yes yes say yes to pain and recognize it say yes to everything it doesn't mean that you're accepting it to be part of your life you know it doesn't mean that you're recruiting more of it but you're saying yes to it as it is you're not fighting it because when you fight something so aggressively especially inwardly inwardly then you're promoting more of it you're using your power of focus your power of attention your power of decision to promote more of it so loving unconditionally is accepting everyone and everything that it is and it doesn't mean that you stick by it you stick to toxicity you know to just toxic toxic environments it means that you accept them and then move away move on to what brings you joy and it's also understanding that everyone is doing the best they can with the mental emotion and spiritual resources they they have and it's also in the understanding that what really uh, goes into action is the conditioning our conditioning is acting our conditioning is what acts you know so everyone is going to act according to their conditioning everyone is going to feel according to their conditioning so when you recognize that then you're just gonna love everybody it doesn't mean you indulge with them doesn't mean you relate with them but you accept them and move on and relate to other situations or other people that um, are incongruent with your own conditioning all right i hope i explained that that's also a little bit hard for me but you know it's around there the power of love is powerful especially unconditional love now the final power now this is real power you all this is real power and i know religion 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 has convinced us deceived us and literally brain brainwashed us to believe that god is out in the sky and he's this big man white with a white big beard above somewhere in the sky and we have to raise our eyes and cry for mercy from him now the bible says the kingdom of god dwells within you okay that's what the bible says and i believe in the bible and there is so much evidence to show that there is power within you there is the power of god within you because when is the last time you beat your heart when is the last time you went into your inner body you know your physical body and engineered your organs to operate the way they do when is the last time you stayed awake and because you were so afraid that if you slept you won't breathe when is the last time you went into your brain and made sure that all the 10 billion cells are operating 
perfectly without you know so that you can be cognitive cognitive when is the last time you really um controlled your heart to beat how many heartbeats have you heard had <laughs> sorry so when is the last time you literally controlled the way your life runs inwardly not outwardly but inwardly that is evidence enough that the god the force of god is within each one of us god is within you good is within you reverend ike once said that the biggest sin of all is thinking and believing that god lives outside you but when you at least believe and at least remember that the power of God is within you, it gives you faith and confidence and assurance that everything, whatever it is, will be taken care of. All right, friends. Now, in summary, the first power is the power of decision. Second, power of intention. Third, the power of attention. Fourth, the power of thinking, the power to think. Fifth, the power of fascination. Six, the power of intention. Seven, the power of perseverance. Eight, the power of patience. Nine, the power of love. And ten, the power of God within you. Now, embrace these powers. Be grateful for these powers. Respect these powers. And let them progress your all areas of your life. In the interim, I'm sending you abundant love from my heart to yours. Peace and blessings.